So uh, recap a little bit from one through eight, Colossians one through one, one through eight. Uh, Darren spoke about last week. Basically, uh, Epaphras had reported back to Paul and Timothy that the church in Colossae uh, uh, talked about their love for the believers and their faith in Christ. And, and he also talked to them a little bit about some of the influences that, uh, oh yeah, I'll tell you what, you can tell I'm a novice. Um, kids, you don't want to hear all this from me. Why don't you, why don't you guys head to your classes? Chad was pointing at his son. I'm like, hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, we got a little bit out of, out of sequence, sorry. Um, but um, anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the heads up. See, it's, we have each other's back. Iron sharpens iron also means pointing at your kid and saying, hey, he's supposed to go. So, um, all right. So I think we're settled down a little bit. We actually had a pretty exciting morning before this, too, so um, just hold on. Hold on tight. Um, so, Epaphras, he did do a lot of talking about the Church of Colossae. The other thing about Colossae was there were some influences in the, in the area there that were trying to um, kind of negatively affect the church. And so, um, Paul's, the way Paul phrased his letter actually is very appropriate for them. But we're just going to take it verse by verse and uh, start with verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Paul's actually praying for real people to be filled with the knowledge of God's will through spiritual wisdom and understanding. And it's, it's, it's significant that he's praying for them to have knowledge. Uh, these, these people that were kind of in, in uh, Colossae, um, they were Gnostics, and the, the word that they used for, for knowledge was Gnosis. And they were kind of an arrogant lot that um, was trying to influence how the, how the Colossians were um, practicing their faith. And so uh, they acknowledged that starting with Jesus was a good, a good plan, but then they started introducing other things, like a, other experiences and other, other knowledges that, that didn't really work, um, weren't biblical. And so uh, they had passwords and rites and initiations and things like that. And the problem was that some of the, some of the folks in uh, Colossae were falling for it. So Paul's prayer hits, hits the nail head on when he's praying for knowledge. So the, the Gnostics word for, for knowledge is Gnosis, Greek word for Gnosis. And it, it, um, it is kind of a basic, uh, basic word for knowledge, but Paul used a, a word for knowledge um, Epignosis, which which is kind of a, a greater understanding, um, and it had a had more of a spiritual base. So it's like all knowledge, and so he was praying. His prayer for their knowledge was that it would override anything that anyone um, outside of the church was was promoting, or even inside. He knew that uh, this greater knowledge was the foundation for walking a um, a spiritual life in Christ. Now we do know that. Um, the Bible talks a lot about knowledge, and there are, there are a, few, a few examples here that I want to bring up. Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So basically, a proper knowledge of, of God is a, a starts with a proper attitude towards God, and that the basic understanding that right knowledge leads to right behavior. Uh, Romans 1, 28 Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. The wisdom and understanding that Paul is praying for is inseparable from the knowledge of God and his will. So he's, he's praying that the, that the Church of Colossae, and in some ways praying for us, that we understand God's will more clearly. And so when we talk about God's will, we're not just talking about... Um, you know, what, what, where should we park or where should we go to lunch or anything like that. We're talking about a greater understanding of God's entire plan for salvation for um, his full purposes of man. And so it's, it's not just um, how it influences us individually. And so one of the things that I, that I kind of think when I think about God's will, I think of it as, as, a, as kind of a stream. I'm very visual I think of it as, as a stream that cannot be diverted, and that 
oftentimes, you know, when we, we go to the beach and we're right on the shore, we're building something and we try to dig a little canal or a trench to, to whatever little project we're working on, we try to divert the water to what we're, we want to do. And so I think we do that along this stream of God's will too, where we might, we might be looking for God's will, but... Um, not really, because it kind of conflicts with ours. So we maybe dig a little trench and try to divert some of this, some of this water uh, from the stream to our own little project. And it doesn't really work that way. Um, do we really want to know God's will? Because it really undoubtedly will conflict with, with ours. But what we really ought to be praying for is a greater knowledge of it and just immerse ourselves in it and let him take us where we're going to go. Uh, I'm not, I have no tubing references or anything like that, but uh, uh, this isn't Georgia. So um, when Amy and I were praying about starting our business, it was probably seven years we were praying, God, do you want us to start this business? Do, we, do you want us to start it? And the answer was always no. I was getting pretty frustrated. Seven years of, of this off and on. And... Um, and so one day, Amy, Amy was praying, and she, she prayed, God, do you want us to start this business? And he said, that what we were used to hearing, no. <laughs> and uh, and something, something in her head kind of clicked, and she, she said, God, do you want to start this business? And he said, yes, and as almost to say, finally, <laughs> finally you got this, okay, that we were so preoccupied with what he wanted us to do that we didn't fully uh, appreciate what he wanted done. And, and so I'm, I haven't always been the best uh, uh, business manager, but we do know that, that God is at the foundation of, of what we do. And, and so we have to kind of change our prayer sometimes. Do we want, you know, and, when we just have, and it comes with a greater understanding and a greater knowledge of his will. So we just want to dive in and let it take, take us where he, he will take us. So the spiritual reference that he's talking about is the Holy Spirit. And we can only really truly understand God's will through his word. That's, that's where it starts and, and finishes. Um, the person who has a greater understanding for God's will is going to, um, we're going to see greater fruit in, in their lives. And so um, walking in all wisdom and understanding. So, um, you know, when we pray for others, especially a lot lately, we, we pray for healing or we pray that uh, for a job or, you know, but how often do we, do we sit, step back and pray that someone will have a greater understanding of God's will? Um, and ultimately, that greater understanding is going to be of God's will is going to be bigger than anything, anything that else that we could be praying about specifically. We could be praying for healing, but we want to pray for healing as it relates to God's will. We could pray for a job. We don't want to, as Christians, I don't think we want to pray for something that is outside of God's will. I'm 100% sure we don't, <laughs> okay? Um, so as we do that, because we know that that a greater understanding of God's will comes through God's word, we need to be, um, we need to appreciate the fact that we're going to need to be part of our own prayer in that. Um, while God can impart wisdom and understanding of his will on us, uh, it's unlikely uh, because of the, the experiences and the growth that comes through reading the word. And so... We also need to be prepared for whatever our cultural Gnosis. Remember, Gnosis was were these people who were in, trying to influence the church, and they start with Jesus, but then they started mixing things up. Uh, we need to be prepared to, um, you know, to to recognize those things in our own culture. And so, um, we've seen it in missions work where we approach someone and we say, "Hey, um, you know, ask them if they." Uh, believe in Jesus? Are they Christian? And they said, oh yeah. But then a few minutes later, we're, we're seeing signs of things like um, ancestral worship and animism and even witchcraft. And we're like, well, that's not Christian. And so Christian is, is, is founded in Jesus in the, in the word. In the, you don't need to mix anything else with it. Um, I had a friend, Rusty, in, down in Florida, he and I had multiple conversations about um, the gospel 
The gospel doesn't need to be added to. It doesn't need to be influenced uh, by the culture. And we need to be able to, with a greater knowledge of God's will, be able to recognize what might be coming at it from the culture, okay, to influence it and influence us. And, pardon me, like the, uh, like the folks in Colossae, we do not want to give in. We do not want to be um, influenced by anything that is outside of the church when it comes to the church. And so um, verse 10 says, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Knowing God's will is being obedient to God's will. Bearing fruit in every good work, does, does that describe us? You know, is that us? Are we bearing fruit in every good work? Um, it's a question we have to ask ourselves every day. And if, if we're not doing that, then we need to ask ourselves why and then try to get back to God's will. We need to pray that our knowledge of God's will increases so that we can be more effective. So in, in, the, in the Hebrew uh, mind at the time, knowledge and conduct were bound together. And so a person did not know something unless they did it. And so Paul is basically praying that they walk their talk. Now, we, we put our talk on the front of the building. Uh, love God, love people. And we need to make sure that we're doing that. We need to walk our talk. And um, the thing about it is, the more, the more knowledge we have of God's will, the more active we will be in it right? And the more active we are in God's will, the more desire we will have to know more God's will. So it's, it's a cycle, all right? But the, the one thing we need to do, though, is, is exhibit it, uh, because I think that much, much of our culture is like the early uh, Hebrew culture in that um, person didn't know something. They, um, you know, they, they, they did it. They did it to exhibit that they knew it. And that's what we need to be doing. And so we need to walk our talk. Um, these days, people of knowledge seem to, don't seem to be people of action, with the exception of Gene. And people of action don't seem to be craving knowledge. We need, um, we need a balance. We need a balance of uh, knowledge and action. And that, that knowledge, of course, is what I'm, we're all talking about today. So any, in any, um, any doctrine that isolates the believer from the needs of the world is not a spiritual doctrine. And so that's one, one thing that we can be looking for with the, with the culture, the Gnosis. Um, we're gonna, we need to bear fruit. So at the end of that, at the end of verse 10, uh, Paul adds, growing in the knowledge of God, again, as if to say it's important. And I think that uh, what he's saying is, uh, basically what we're talking about. The more um, you truly serve God, the more you're wanting, you're going to want to know his will. The more you know his will, the more you're going to want to serve him. And we need to get into that pattern. Uh, it is a, uh, it's a pattern that I think Jesus talked a little bit about in John 7, 17. He said, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. So you choose to do the will of God, you're going to have a greater understanding of what Jesus is saying. Jesus is God, um, FYI. Um, and so that cycle is kind of, it kind of in there. Now there's a cycle that Paul talks about in Romans, that uh, Romans 12, 1 through 2, Susan read, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's, we don't need to be conforming to the pattern of the world. Paul's basically saying if you conform to the pattern of the world or these outside influences in Colossae, we're agnostics, if you conform to that pattern, you, you're not going to understand God's will. But if you conform to the pattern of die to yourself, live in Christ. If you die to yourself, you're going to live in Christ. As you live in Christ, you're going to be more inclined to want to die to yourself. And so the pattern, that's the pattern we need to be conforming to as, as Christians. We need to walk, walk the talk 
all right? And so, um, you know, they're, they were dealing with a lot of outside influences, and I, and I think we are too. So we don't need to be conforming to the pattern of the world, and, we, and that is a commitment that we, that we have to God, and it's a commitment that we have together to each other as the church. So uh, verse 11, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. So when he's praying for uh, all power, for us to have knowledge in the power of his glorious might, he's talking about the one who created the universe, who uh, rose from the dead, was Lazarus, Lazarus from the dead, uh, virgin birth. I mean, miracle, 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 miracle. Um, great power. And, God, and Paul is basically praying, look, I, we, I want you to have, have this knowledge through the power of God. And with that power, Paul also prays that we'll have patience and endurance. Um, so patience and endurance. Pa patience is more of a dealing with difficult people, I think, and endurance is, is dealing more with difficult situations. And uh, we need to have both because Paul is praying that we stand, endure, perse persevere, remain steadfast, that we stay at it. Um, there's a... Um, Winston Churchill quote, he was addressing some, some students at his former school, and he, he said, never give up, never give up, never give up, never, 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 <laughs> okay? And that's not just a motivational speech for, for us as Christians. It should be praying for perseverance and patience and, and fighting and, and basically standing our ground, um, holding our position in battle. And so knowing what that battle is and knowing where our position should be is, is founded in God's will. That makes sense? So we're going to need patience and endurance no matter what. And so um, combined together, they're quite beautiful. I don't know, I, I know of one, one person, Jesus, who had perfect balance of patience and endurance. And so when Paul prays that we be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, not only are we to rest in the power of the creator, but also the power of the one who has, is perfect, perfect balance of both. So a church that has good, good balance of uh, patience and endurance can be a great church and uh, do work worthy of the Lord. So where, where do we stand with that? Um, we're, we're working today um, to get some boxes to kids overseas, but we need to be focused on um, our, not our actions, but on diving into God's word, knowing God's will and acting on that. Because, um, you know, the world's watching. The world's watching us uh, individually and corporately. And so uh, if we want to demonstrate that we know, that we know because we know because we know God's will, we're going to be people of action. And so um, take some, as many opportunities as you can to do that, to, to demonstrate God's, God's will and, and, and action. Be people of action. That's, that's what we want to be, right? We don't, this isn't a come sit for an hour and a half every Sunday and not do anything else during the week. We need to be like hot coals all week, okay? Night and day. And... Um, we do that by diving into the word and keeping it in our hearts, in our minds, and, um, and living a life that demonstrates it. So um, I know we're moving fast, but we're okay. Verse 12, Darren always says, uh, all right, let's land this plane. Uh, honestly, I'm just trying not to crash it. <laughs> so <laughs> verse 12, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So now he's talking about our inheritance. Um, Paul's saying that we need to walk thankfully, joyfully in, in whatever we do, okay? Um, why? Well, I think he gives, he gives a few reasons. Uh, one, God has qualified us. We, we don't belong to this kingdom anymore. We belong to his kingdom, the kingdom of light. And, and we need to act like it. He's qualified us. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. 
You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Amen to that. Verse 13, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He's rescued us. That's number two on the list of why, on this list anyway, of why should we should be walking joyfully in the Lord and, and grateful for every circumstance and giving it all to his will, subjecting to his will. We've been rescued. Uh, I used to be part of a men's group, and we, we had a talk one night, and uh, one thing I noticed was uh, testimonies all, always seemed to be kind of focused on uh, the rescue, okay? And I think the first part of our testimony is being rescued. Uh, I threw in some other R's, rescue, renew, resource, and release. Our testimony isn't just what we've been rescued from, as powerful as it is, Okay? We have been released and renewed and resourced to do the things that God wants us to do. It's, part of our, it's going to be part of our testimony. And I know everybody's testimony is going to be a little bit different at different times of different points in their walk. But understand that we don't have to camp out at rescue. Um, we, we have been rescued from the dominion of darkness. And so whether you actually know it or not, uh, if you have faith in Christ... You have been rescued from the dominion of darkness. So, um, and I, I've kind of equate the dominion of darkness with this world. If 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 Satan rules in this world, um, then this is the dominion of darkness. Um, do y'all know what um, what uh, Stockholm syndrome is? So, uh, if you don't, I'll give the non scientific, non gene version. Um, basically. <laughs> A, someone is held captive, and they develop this emotional attachment to their captors. Uh, uh, even such to the point where, once they're rescued, uh, they, they look for leniency with the uh, courts and, and just trying to, uh, there's just this weird emotional connection. Well, I, I think we need to be careful not to, on, on one side, acknowledge that we've been rescued from the dominion of darkness, but then, almost like Stockholm Syndrome, have this weird emotional connection to things in the, that we've been rescued from. And it may be, it may be anything, okay? Um, we each know that individually, the things that we cling to. Uh, but it might be that we, if we get caught up in things that are of this world, it's not wrong to, uh, it's not wrong to be involved in politics or love sports or, or anything like that unless we make it our God. Um, but if we put those things ahead of, of God, we're actually kind of clinging to our captors a little bit, okay? It doesn't mean they're bad things. It means we've been freed from them, um, and they're part of this world. And so I know that, um, as far as sports go, ultimate will be in heaven, <laughs> even if we, we take it there. Um, but uh, so we need, to be, we need to be holding onto our position and fighting through and not clinging to the things of this world. Uh, Paul, when Paul talked about that, that's a pattern that we do not need to be conforming to. And so as we, as, we, as a church and individually, we pray for each other to, to grow in the greater knowledge of God in all power and wisdom of the Spirit, we need to be praying that... Um, that we, that we let ourselves be taken by God, that we, that we don't try to divert this river to our own lives and conform to whatever we want, you know, um, but that we just get in it and, and we just ride it. It's going to be better than anything. It's going to be better than anything that we choose to, to divert his, his will to. And it's not going to work anyway, by the way. Um, we've been purchased for a price. We are fully redeemed, fully forgiven, fully healed, fully free. So we don't need to be holding on to anything in this world. We still have to conduct ourselves accordingly because we are here. But that's why God wants us to make an impact here, not to, not to hold on to it, but to change it. And we can do that. We have the power to do that because we have the power of God in us. So... Um, 
This is really a kind of a um, intercessory prayer on Paul's part, isn't it? He heard about the church through Epaphras, and so he's praying about them, knowing a little bit about what's going on, but knowing also where their heart is. And so I wanted to just say for a second, intercessory prayer is of great value, okay? Um, I, was, I was in the ER. I was on a ventilator. I w- my heart had stopped for a good 48 minutes. And um, I failed all sorts of neurological tests that you can't fake. And while that was going on, this church was on its knees praying for a miracle. My, uh, my family were on their knees praying for a miracle. And so when the, the doctor came in and said, look, he, he failed every test. He, there's, there's just no hope. He is, he is brain dead. Um, they were hit pretty hard, and obviously... They just prayed harder. And when the, when the doctor came in and, and told Amy and the kids that they could come in and see me, basically to say goodbye, um, my kids prayed, God, wake him up when mom goes in there. And he did. He just did. And there's no, and that's why, you know, when doctors and EMS workers and nurses and realtors uh, <laughs> come and poke their head in the door of my hospital room to, and just look at me and don't say anything. And he's like, they're just appreciating the fact that you were, you were gone. To them, you were dead. To God, I was alive. But there were a lot of people praying. In fact, I don't think many of you know that uh, a friend of mine, another pastor, um, Josh, was praying with a friend of his um, up in Nashville. Another Josh. You're still number one, Josh. Um, shortly after I woke up, they were, everybody was still praying. There was, a group, there was a group of people outside the hospital praying. And um, this Josh up in Nashville said to my friend Josh, something happened. He didn't know that I had woken up. He just said, something happened. And I'm telling you, when we intercede in prayer for people, Paul obviously knew that it was important because he was doing it. Get it? He knew it was important and he was doing it. We know God's will is important. We know knowledge of God's will is important. So we got to do it. We demonstrate it. That's how people know. And so this church, Grace Christian Fellowship, Seacoast Church, my, my friends and family, they were praying. And, um, you know, we could have a big debate about prayer, but I'm standing here, and God is good, all right? And so, interceding for people, pray for healing. There are a lot of people who need healing right now, okay? Pray for, pray for comfort pray for healing, pray for people who don't know the truth, to know the truth, pray for each other that we would all, every one of us, you know, if we know this individually, if we, if we know that diving into the word helps us corporately as a church, that's how we, that's how we do life together. I like, I like um, eating together and hanging out together, worshiping together. But you know that the, one of the biggest things we do for, can do for each other is study the word and do it together and do it individually. And that is going to grow us closer to God and, and in, the, in the knowledge of his will. We know it's true. We need to do it. Okay? That's the church we want to be, Right? We want to be a church that impacts people, that when they come in the door, that they, they see the sign and they're like, okay, well, um, we'll see about that. <laughs> and um, we want them to see about that. We want them to know. And if you walk in and you're visiting and you don't experience that, come see me. Okay? We, we need to be 
the people that God wants us to be. And that is only accomplished through the Holy Spirit by diving into God's word and understanding his will and acting in it. When we act in it, I don't have the board up here, but when we act in it, we're going to want more knowledge of God's will. When we have it, we'll be acting in it more. And we want we want people to be just caught up in this, <laughs> this, this cycle that we're, that we, we're, we're, we want to be in this. And um, so that's how we're going to do it. So let's land the plane, okay? And pray. Let's pray with me, please. God, fill us with the knowledge of your will through all the wisdom and understanding that your spirit gives so we can live a life worthy of you, that we can please you, that we could bear fruit in every good work, Lord. Help us to do it joyfully. Help, help us to just lay it all down. Help us to, to quit trying to dig paths and, and trenches away from your word and your, your will. And help us to stop trying to divert the river of your will and just get in it and submerge, submerge, submerse ourselves in it. Lord, we know that you're going to take us... Um, to a far better place than we could ever do for ourselves. Lord, we pray for those who are hurting or sick right now that for healing and comfort. And Lord, we pray that, um, that those that are, that are watching this video now or in the future or in this room, Lord, that we can grow in knowledge of your will. And Lord, we pray that you would give us the courage, the endurance, and the patience to do that, to rest in it, to rest in you, no matter the circumstances. We will endure through the circumstances, Lord, but only through your power. We will have patience with each other, Lord, but only through your power. Let us put our hopes and our rest, Lord, in Jesus, who had perfect balance, perfect, absolutely perfect. So we commit ourselves to you, Lord. We commit ourselves uh, best we can individually and certainly corporately, God, to rest in you. We lift this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen.